I rectify every chart on the spot with the client. It is the only way that I can determine how accurate the birth time is. Otherwise, directions and progressions and solar arcs, anything involving moving the ascendant or the midheaven forward or back, will be off by as much as one year for every four minutes of birth time error. Erect the chart for the best time that you have. Then mentally move the midheaven forward and back to form aspects with the planets. Hard aspects are generally better because the events tend to be more specifically recalled. Use the one degree equals a year method to determine the age of occurrence of events. Then ask questions about those aspects. When you were age 10, or how many ever degrees it is, did such and such happen? And I find that ages under 30 years old are a little bit likelier to be somewhat more precise than older ones, but not necessarily. So in essence, what you are doing is directing the midheaven forward and backward by solar arc. The events that you see should be accurate. The age of occurrence may be off, which will reflect an inaccurate birth time. So you ask, were you 10, were you 9, were you 11? And if you are off on the age of the event, then mentally adjust the midheaven to the required degree to make that aspect exact, to coincide with the event at their exact age it happened. And then using that new midheaven, find and ask about another aspect or event. I just want to remind you, no rectification is to the minute exact for ages of all events just doesn't happen. Especially after the age of 30, it is more likely the exactness can be off by half a year or more. And that's why earlier aspects are preferred. This method has the advantage of using only the midheaven, which is very precisely dependent on birth time. And it will not show everything. Other events and ages will show using other points and planets. But none of them establish the birth time as precisely as the midheaven. Once you are satisfied that you've determined a reasonably accurate midheaven, use the formula one degree equals four minutes of birth time and adjust the birth time for recalculation of the, of the rectified chart. Then you can start using directions involving the midheaven and the ascendant with confidence. A couple of tips. Early events such as moves and major trips and the birth of siblings, illnesses, accidents, parental illnesses or loss and so on. Usually those are pretty clearly recalled. Important psychological events, including traumas, may or may not be so readily recalled. Or they may be minimized in importance. So let's try it. This is my own chart simply for efficiency, because I am not going to spend hours researching every detail of Lindsay Lohan's life to indicate how to rectify a chart, because I already know everything that's happened to me. So let's start. As you see, I use equal houses. So here is my midheaven at 28 Libra, according to the time on my birth certificate. So let's move it forward, move it backwards, see what kind of aspects it makes, especially hard aspects. What do you see? Well, first thing I see, if I move it forward, is it conjuncts Venus at 6 degrees, or age 6. If I move it backwards, hmm. It conjuncts Mars at T, age 6. So what we're trying to do is come up with questions to ask this client about age 6 to see how accurate this midheaven is. So what houses do Venus and Mars rule in the chart? And where are they in relation to the midheaven? Well, Venus is in the 10th house, on the 10th house side of midheaven. Mars is on the 9th house side of it. So you have the 9th and 10th houses. You've also got Mars ruling the 4th house. And you've got Mars ruling the 11th house. 
and you've got Venus ruling the fifth house, and you've got Venus ruling the ninth house. So let me ask you, client, um, was there an important move in your life, changing your family, a move to a new town when you were age six? Did it involve maybe your father, Mars symbol, your father maybe a career change on his part? Um, and maybe it involved going to a new school for you at age six, that move, and forming a whole new group of friends, get all this 11th house, 5th house stuff gang. Maybe it involved age six, some kind of creative awakening or artistic awakening at six. And, you know, I know it sounds weird, but <laughs> age six is a little early to be starting a career, but did did... Did you do something like work or earn a living or start, I don't know, I don't know what I'm asking. Why, gee, astrologer, yeah, as a matter of fact, at age six, um, we moved to a new town where I would stay until I graduated high school because my father started a medical practice there. Uh, he had been a, a general practitioner a little time before that, and now he was a specialist. And, you know, it's funny that you would ask because, yeah, I did start a new school, but I also, they started giving me piano lessons from a wonderful woman named Marceline Girard and art lessons from a woman who was crippled. She had had polio, Miss Mayberry. Funny how I remember that, age six. And, you know, you mentioned a career. Well, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I immediately started performing. I was on stages. I was charging the neighbors to come to little plays. I was giving piano recitals. I was acting. I got really interested in magic. You know, it reminds me, ultimately, I became the youngest member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. All that started at age six. So, ladies and gentlemen, so far so good. Those events at that age are right on the money. So let's find something else. Mars converse, if we go backwards here, is going to square Saturn at age 18. Now this had better work because that's a biggie. Saturn in Cancer, ruler of this man's ascendant in the seventh house. Gee, what would I ask the client when the midheaven, by converse progressions, triggers that square at age 18? Well, let's go. Let me ask you something. Did you move again? When you were 18 years old, did you leave your home and family, maybe to go to college or something? Yeah, actually, I did. Did you break up with somebody, maybe a high school sweetheart? Oh, my God, yes, I did. K. oh, my God, I'm in tears. Uh, it looks like that might have also been a kind of a difficult year for your family, was it? <laughs> yeah, funny you'd ask about that because my parents got divorced after 26 years of marriage. And my mom attempted suicide. Well, let me ask you about college. Uh, is that where you really started exploring uh, relationships and sex and partying and all of that, that stuff? Yeah, yeah, it was. It sure was. Okay, so that's looking pretty good with this mid-heaven. Now, remember, we're primarily looking for events that correspond to hard aspects, so let's keep going. Why, this same midheaven conjuncts the sun at age 20 in the ninth house. So let me ask you something. At age 20, did you move again a long distance away? Well, yeah, I did, actually. I moved to Los Angeles. Let me ask you this because your son rules your eighth, but I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, was age 20 a pretty big year in terms of, let me just be blunt here, sex, death and rebirth, and religion, 
and other people's money? Uh, did you start some kind of a new school because your son's in the ninth house at this long distance away? Uh, <laughs> gee, astrologer, that's kind of amazing because, yeah, uh, I did. I, I moved to Los Angeles to go to the Pasadena Playhouse where I won the only full tuition scholarship that they gave, speaking about other people's money. And I joined Actors' Equity Association and the Screen Actors Guild that year. And you know, it's amazing because that is the year that I found astrology and began to study it. And clients started coming really quickly. And it was also the first uh, live-in marriage-like adult relationship that I had at age 20. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this Midheaven is looking pretty good. Let's keep going. Midheaven conjuncts Neptune, if you move it backwards, at Midheaven. At what age? Oh, age 24. So let's ask. Let me ask you something. At age 24, <laughs> did you take another trip, a long trip to out of the country maybe? Well, y yes, as a matter of fact, I did. I, I went to Canada. I took a month-long trip to uh, Canada. Well, something else we need to kind of explore, I think, with you, and that would be drugs and alcohol, because they show up pretty strongly at your birth. Was is 24 any kind of significant? Yeah, it was, actually. Uh, what kind of a drug? Well, marijuana and alcohol, that's all. Uh, and what about acting? Because that's ruled with Neptune. Was that a significant? Oh my gosh, yeah, 24. Best professional acting experience of my life in a repertory company. And what about this astrology thing you mentioned? Well, yeah, because by now, actually, age, age 24, the astrology was really full blown. It was a second career for me. All right, this Midheaven's looking pretty good. Let's keep going. At Age 25, it opposes my birth moon down here. So let me ask you about age 25. Was that another move? You don't, you just don't settle down, do you? Another move? Was there a breakup in this marriage-like relationship? Because the moon rules the seventh. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, that's true. In fact, at age 25, Wow, man, you're making me think back. That was really when I changed my whole identity from an actor to an astrologer. And I started doing all this writing and publishing. It was really a big deal for me, that identity change. That's when I met Linda Goodman, as a matter of fact, an Aries woman. <laughs> Can't tell you how these things work out literally. So I'm like, man, I did. I did a lot of traveling. I went to Cripple Creek, Colorado. I went to uh, New York for a while. I, I was giving all these lectures. I was invited to lecture, my God, UCLA Medical Association, I, the Bank of Beverly Hills. I was writing and publishing and teaching and doing all this stuff for American Astrology Magazine. I was going to... So, by now, you've got enough direct kits to feel pretty certain about this midheaven. And that is how on-the-spot rectification with the client works. It accomplishes three things at once. It proves to clients that astrology works. It proves that you know what you're doing as an astrologer. And it yields an accurate time of birth that you can work from going forward. Now, again, if, if the early events are off by a year or something, mentally change the midheaven by one degree for each year it's off and ask another question using that new midheaven. And honestly, usually within two or three questions, you'll settle on a midheaven that you think is accurate. Then you recalculate the chart with that new midheaven by looking up the ascendant and a table of houses or adjusting the time on your computer program. And now you have a chart that you feel you can trust and a midheaven and ascendant that you can progress and direct accurately. And as I say, neither this method nor any other rectification method is going to yield consistent, accurate, to the minute hits. Nothing in astrology does. As I said, it is not science in the way that physics is. It is not fatalistically determinant, 
as are electrons and protons and neutrons. Uh, there are too many variables, really, including the debate over the actual, quote unquote, moment of birth. So that to demand that astrology be that precise, which it cannot be, rather than that accurate, which it is, is a false premise. And it shows a philosophy of astrology that is mechanical and causal and fatalistic rather than living and synchronous.